break down the latest PTB patch note for 7.6.0 update, or if you want to call it the chapter 31 update, we're going to break it all down so that way you know what to expect on the PTB and of course when the chapter drops in a few weeks. But before we do that, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, I am Old Head Gaming. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for all Dead by Daylight related news. Now, let's go take a look at the patch notes. And we're going to start with content, new perk type, invocation. Invocation are a new type of survivor perk. Invocations require survivors to activate a salt circle in the basement on an activation. A penalty is paid in exchange for a large boost. New survivor, Sable Ward. We have a female survivor. Invocation weaving spiders. What? This sounds interesting. When in the basement near the circle, press the ability one to begin the invocation. Invocations take 120 seconds across the board. So there's no reduction in time as it goes up. Other survivors will see your aura during this time and can join the ongoing invocation, increasing the speed by 50% straight across the board. And if they have the invocation perk equipped, they increase it by 100% instead. So if you have two people running invocation, basically her perk, then you're able to do it. Once the invocation is complete, you become injured and broken for the rest of the trial. All generators instantly gain 9, 12, and 15 charges. Completing the invocation disables the perk for all survivors as well. Strength in Shadows. When in the basement, the perk activates. Unlock the Strength in Shadows ability, which allows you to heal without a med kit for 60% straight across of normal healing. When you finish the heal in the basement, you'll see the killer's aura for 6, 8, or 10 seconds. And the final perk for Sable is called Wicked. Note the PT features an older version of the perk, which since has been replaced. The effects listed below are how the perk functions on the PTB, but this effect will be changed upon the update going actually live. The perk starts with one token up to a maximum of five across the board. For each token, you recovered mangled 20, 20, and 20 faster. For each 15 seconds spent in the basement, gain one token. While affected by curse status effect, you gain heal 8, 9, and 10% faster. So, Sable apparently is a basement witch. <laughs> which is pretty cool. The new killer is called the unknown killer power. Press the power button to charge the UVX. Once ready, press the attack button, to launch UVX, a bouncing projectile, which creates a blast aura upon impact. Survivors become hindered if touched by the UVX while airborne. Survivor touching the blast area become weakened. Weakened survivors lose health states. If touched by a blast area, survivors lose weakened by successfully staring down the unknown. Special ability hallucinations. The unknown will intermittently create hallucinations. Hallucinations cannot be created while charging UVX, performing interactions, or proximity to map objects look like hooks. Whenever survivors are touched by blast area or otherwise become weakened, the next hallucination spawns time becomes 10 seconds less special ability teleport the unknown can teleport to hallucinations leaving behind a temporary decoy survivors can remove hallucinations from the trial with a dispel ability weakened survivors take longer to dispel if the dispel is not completed survivors become weakened and trigger killer instinct good gravy perks unbound the perk activates for 24 27 or 30 seconds after survivor becomes injured by any means after vaulting a window, you gain 5% haste for 10 seconds. This effect cannot stack with itself. Unforeseen. When you perform the break action on a generator, your terror radius transfers to the generator for 22, 26, or 30 seconds, and its radius is set to 32 meters across the board. You gain undetectable for that duration. Then the perk goes on cooldown for 30 seconds across the board undone when survivor misses a healing or repair skill check gain three tokens up to a maximum of 18 24 or 30 tokens when you perform the break action on a generator if you have any tokens consume all of them for each token consumed the generator loses one percent of progress and becomes blocked for one second holy shit like if you consume 30 tokens you're gonna lose 30 percent of progress and 30 second lock this is a crazy gen defense perk then once the generator is unblocked it starts regressing the perk goes on cooldown for only 60 seconds wow undone is a nasty nasty block gen perk um interesting and dependent on the players you're going against but every skill check miss no matter if it's healing or it's a gen miss will just 
pause tokens to gain. Like, you can really lock some people up if they fuck up. New map, Greenville Square. A new section of the Withered Isle has opened up to players. The Greenville Square is a very different environment from what we've previously seen in that realm. It features a brand new set of tiles, including a new main building, the theater. We saw them projecting at the theater on their YouTube earlier today. It features a brand new set of tiles. Make sure to explore all of its layers. Look out the statue with two familiar friends who meet up and leave their mark. What does it mean? Where will it bring us next? No one has ever come back to tell us. Mangled update. Mangled up till now has required survivors to heal in order to remove the effect, while also slowing down healing speeds. To create a more meaningful player choice, we'll be adding a timer to every source of mangle in the game, allowing players to choose to heal through it or wait it out. The effective perks are going to be Blood Echo, Sloppy Butcher, and Gift of Pain. And then here's a huge list of add-ons because, you know, a lot of add-ons add mangle, like e face smiley for legion or diagnostic tool for singularity so on and so forth all right now we're going to get to the killer updates the first one is blight and then we're going to focus on add-ons compound 33 rush cannot be performed more than three times was two. increase rush turn rates by 33 percent and duration by 33 percent as well the clown now this is an adjustment to clown's base kit Increase afterpiece antidote duration to six seconds was five. Decrease afterpiece antidote activation delay to two seconds was two and a half. And increase the number of base bottles to six was four. Decrease the visual effect intensity when a survivor is affected by afterpiece tonic. Now that was, there's not as much blur. So people who were feeling some sort of nausea from it don't get affected by it. Demo puppy. Base kit. Decrease shred successful hit cooldown to 2.2 seconds was 3. And decrease shred pallet break to 1.8, it was 2. So a little bit faster actions for the demo puppy. We also adjusted some of his add-ons. Blackheart decrease shred hit cooldown by 10% was 15. And Barb's glasses decrease shred pallet breakdown by 10%, it was 15. Doctor, base kit, increase shock therapy range to 12 meters was 10.7. Oh god. Decreased shock therapy detonation delayed at 0.8 seconds was one. Ugh, gross. I don't want to play doctor ever. Discipline class three decreased the detonation delay shock therapy by 15% was 20. And discipline Carter's notes decreased the detonation delay by 20% was 30. Hag, she's getting a big rework. Let's start with her base kit. Increased phantasm trap teleport range to 48 meters was 40. Decreased Phantasm Trap setting time to 0.9 seconds was 1. Increased Triggered Phantasm Trap duration to 6 seconds was 5. Decreased Phantasm Trap range to 2.7 meters was 3. So that's a little bit smaller. Increased the time it takes to wipe away traps to 4 seconds was 3.5. So most of Hag stuff got a nice little boost. Ton of her add-ons got adjusted. Um... Bloodied Mud, decreased Phantasm Trap by 30% was increases. <laughs> okay. They're not going to give us the, the, the exact measurements so I can... I don't have play hags. So I don't have them off the top of my head. Uh, bl so, Bloody Water, Bog Water, Cracked Turtle, Egg. Uh, this one we actually actually know. Increased Trigger Phantasm Trap duration by 20 was 55%. Cypress Necklet, increased Phantasm Trap speed by 15 was 20 uh, dead fly mud increased range by 10% was 20. So it looks like they boosted her base kit, but dinged her add-ons a little bit. So she's not so add-on dependent. And we're seeing that kind of across the board, like half eggshell increased trigger phantasm trap duration by 15 was 45. Um, increased phantasm trap setting by 10% was, was 15. Um, yeah, so makes sense. Uh, increased her hatchet count to seven was five. Increased Huntress movement speed while holding a hatchet to 3.54 seconds was 3.08. So it's almost a half a second increase. And decreased hatchet wind up speed by a tenth of a second to 0.9 seconds. Piggly Wiggly base kit. Increased ambush duration by 2.3 seconds was two. Decreased ambush attack successful cooldown to 2.0 seconds was 3. Decreased and ambush attack miss cooldown to 1.5 was 2. Increased the pig's movement speed and crouch to 3.8 was 
Uh, decrease the time it takes for pig to crouch to one second was 1.3 and increase the bear traps timer to 180 seconds. It was 150. So if you if you play an ambush pig, you're definitely going to notice if you play a bomb, bomb, bomb pig, uh, you might not like this. Remove the pig's ability to see jigsaw boxes. Increase the amount of blood points earned for each ambush hit to 850 was 500. And increase the amount of blood points earned for setting reverse bear trap to 1,000 was 500. So you might have a longer bomb, but you're going to get paid well for it. So that's not bad. Uh, Add-ons, combat straps, uh, increase crouching and uncrouching speed by 10% was 30. Shattered syringe, decrease ambush attack, miss cooldown by 10% was 25. Uh, workshop grease, increase ambush attack charge speed by 50%. Decrease ambush attack miss by 10% was 25 now, it seems like they're kind of just bringing the add-ons for her in line, kind of like what they did with Hag. Uh, you boost the base kit, you lower the add-on. Features, copyrighted music. A separate toggle has been added to the audio selection screen menu to enable or disable copyrighted music. The setting is no longer bound to anonymous mode. Well, that's good. Uh, UX blood web improvements. The auto purchase center node gets unlocked for all characters after at least one of them have been pristine. Level up pop-ups can be skip pressing, controller A, mouse left, keyboard key, add-on, okay. Uh, locked outfit disc discount tag removal. For outfits that cannot have pieces purchased individually, a discount tag will no longer be shown for buying the entire set. All right. Okay, buggy fixes, audio. A certain character sounds in menu should now correctly match changes in game when equipping customizations. Fix the missing voice line between Ellen and Jonesy. Okay. Bots, the nemesis zombies no longer attempt to navigate towards vaults they cannot vault. And bots playing on the underground complex are better at avoiding dead ends in certain tiles. Characters, Cenobite's camera no longer points upward when hit by possessed chain. Light no longer has three tokens when equipped both C33 and iridescent tag add-ons. Hillbilly no longer reappears late when dropping a carry survivor after being blinded or stunned. When crouched, the pig no longer plays the wrong bolting animation. Uh, downing survivor affected by the afterpiece antidote no longer fails to get progression. To the alien annihilator archive challenge, Singularity's blood points can now properly lock onto survivor when on 21-9 aspect ratio and the 16-9 aspect ratio setting on. Uh, the guards now correctly detect survivor loud noises. Hillbilly's achievement, the grind, now correctly counts chainsaw hits. Core memory disturbing notions on the ornament map. Memory shards may spawn in the ground and cannot be collected by survivors. Globally, the trapper's bear traps will appear floating when near a pallet. I've not seen this, but I heard it's hilarious. Certain killer perks no longer provide progression to the Ailing Annihilator Archive challenge without giving a status effect to survivors. The Dredge's abduction now counts correctly as downing for the Ailing Annihilator challenge. Hubris no longer enters cooldown after initially dropping a survivor when they're past 75% wiggle. Survivors can get stuck inside lockers if they slowly enter the locker or under poor networking conditions. Uh, plot twist perk no longer activates the Dissolution perk. Survivors can no longer place traps on regressing generators. Uh, survivors now can correctly receive killer stun scoring event when using blast mine. M2 attacks no longer consider basic attack when blinded. Uh, Blight's rush action no longer fails to activate when a trial lasts very long. Killers no longer jump when the damage actions are canceled. The thwack perk no longer fails to activate after destroying a breakable wall, and the knight no longer can teleport by performing interactions from far away using his power, Guardia Companion. Environments and maps. Let's see. Improved performance globally when decorations used on maps. Fix an issue for bot navigation on combined harvester. Uh, fix an issue where the dark mist would no would not appear everywhere in Greenville Square. A fixed issue in Greenville Square where the blight could not bounce off of blockers. A fixed an issue in RPD where the xenomorph turrets could should could should that's not right. <laughs> could show through the walls. That is their typo, not me misspeaking. 
UI. Fix an issue where active states of the tab player profile is not resetting properly. Fix an issue where player profile is displayed on offering screen. And fixed an issue to open operations and daily riches during the five seconds before trial starts. And fixed an issue where some player cards do not appear to search results. Fix the potential crash in the main menu where a killer entering lobby on PS4 or PS5. And miscellaneous black bars no longer appear around the screen in menus and transitions in resolution of 6.9. Uh, known issues, the Wither Isla offering will not bring players to the new map, Greenville Square. So if you have a Greenville Square map offering, don't use it because it doesn't fucking work. And there you have it. Uh, we're going to be doing, of course, the update today. We have a new survivor. We have a new killer. We have a new map and a new PTB to play on. We also have a bunch of killer reworks. So you might not just see the unknown on there because people will want to be trying out Huntress with her new hatchets or maybe Hag or Pig with their new base kit upgrades, including Clown. I mean, Clown's going to be there anyway because let's be honest, that happens. And we're going to be checking that out tonight. We will be dropping some other videos on the PTB as well uh, throughout the launch of it. And of course, all the way up to leading to the final information for Chapter 31. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and later.